Um, so, socket. Why would you possibly, possibly think of giving a talk on socket? Not the most inspiring uh, uh, thing I, I could think of, but uh, I was encouraged by one of my uh, work colleagues to show off just some of the new things that we, we found when exploring inside the uh, Python docs for socket. There's just a couple of uh, secret we, uh, constants that like, and various other things of this form. Um, and going digging, we, we found some interesting things. So I thought I'd share my box of toys today. Um, yeah, why, why would I do that? Um, it's not really about um, sockets, not entirely. Um, first of all, I guess I'll just get sockets out of the way. Um, network sockets, the normal TCP, UDP ones, you do something like um, import sockets from the standard module and you know, fire up a, um, a connection to a web server on port 80 or something. I guess that's not too far away from what Firefox and Chrome does when you request a website. Probably not, but something very similar happens underneath at some level. Um, taking a closer look on the server side, you usually have um, something that's accepting connections, um, listening, and then when you get a connection from a client, you spin up a new thread or something. So in this case, I could run a very, very simple um, client um, doing sending data, and a server can just you know, echo it back, this echo function here. Um, that would be pretty straightforward, pretty boring. Um, we're, we're communicating with the operating system here, though. When we're doing socket calls, we're, we're not telling Python. We're, we're letting Python tell the operating system, um, hey, queue up to five socket requests here. That's what this listen five does. Um, and so we're saying, keep up to five, but we think we can sp spin up a new thread in the time it takes to process that. And that's all good. So each client connects, makes a new one, new socket kits, a pair is made. Um, yes, of course, I've removed all the error handling. It seems to be the way you do these things, so they fit on a slide, um, making it pretty much useless code. <laughs> um, client side of it, um, also fairly straightforward. Um, you might want to use the get adder info um, to set up your socket addresses and address families and things um, instead of all hard coding it. Um, in this case, when I run it, it will return inet6 or inet um, for ip6. That would be very boring if I just did that on my laptop. So I found a, uh, a, a toy um, that I had lying around, Neo Freerunner. So this is a open source phone, which looks like it's in a kernel panic, which is great. Um, so I, I have like four or five embedded demos. I'm expecting maybe one of them to work, but we'll see. Um, so the first one here, I have a version, an operating system on here called SHR, which is kind of based on Debian. And in theory, when I do that, when it's not looking like this, um, I would get a SSH connection to it. And being just a Debian operating system, it's normally just a computer, and normally I can connect to it. And what I was going to do is run my server on here. Um, so that's, that's strike one for the embedded demos. <laughs> um, if you want to have a, have a look or have a chat about um, the open um, Moco Freerunner, come have a look or talk to me later about that. I'll carry on and, yep, that one failed. Kind of expected that. Um, on the other end, I have a Python 3 version of that. So um, going away from TCP, UDP um, to domain sockets, Unix sockets, um, if we, you've probably heard that Linux treats everything as a file, um, you know, from, from open files to your dev null and dev random and all these file descriptors for sockets as well. Um, the way we can pass these around and use these on the on Ubuntu um, Linux systems is with Unix domain sockets, um, and so that's used for inter-process communication when you've got two processes running, not necessarily um, related. Um, you can communicate between them using these, and that lets the kernel, um, so it can only be on the same machine for Unix domain sockets, and the kernel can then, you know, avoid that whole expensive networking layer, speeding things up. They're used within um, Python's source code. So if we look at um, the multiprocessing connection.py module, we dig into the implementation of queues, and there's a lot of um, C sockets used in there. And in this case, the connection.py Python file, so from Python source, um, it's actually using Python's socket implementation, which obviously underneath uses raw sockets. Um, I'm not saying you should do that. Um, 
if you're going to be doing inter-process communication and you happen to be working in Python on both ends, use the higher level abstractions like Q. They're way, way nicer. Um, but underneath, this is what's going on. Um, since Python 3.3, where they've added send receive um, message instead of just send and receive. So send message and receive message. And you can use that to send open file descriptors. So if you already have a socket open in one process or a file open, um, and you can just pass that open file descriptor through to another process. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in more abusive ways of using sockets. So this, this um, very, very uh, weird example, which I don't think could ever possibly um, happen in the real world. But imagine if you were on a, some sort of creation system where the uh, admin has locked it down, so each process is only allowed X number of kilobytes or something, and you're, you're running into the, your upper, uh, upper limit. Um, but you knew the kernel has more. It's got heaps. Um, a way you could possibly get around this would be firing off some uh, UDP sockets to yourself, because you're allowed to do that, with your own process, or in another thread, or another process, and using that as some sort of FIFO queue. And so I had a wee experiment with that, and uh, with when I start to get into multi-threading stuff, as soon as it gets beyond about two threads, I've kind of got in the habit um, of drawing a bit of a diagram and working out all the concurrent stuff. So if I have a main thread that wants to get rid of some data um, from, it doesn't need it right now, but it wants to save it, maybe the system doesn't have files. I just thought of that. Um, it could have saved it to a file or something, but for argument's sake, we're trying to keep this in RAM. Um, so we want the operating system to take care of it. Consumer thread here is just going to wait around accepting um, connections from this and then create a new, a new worker thread um, when the data has been saved. So to illustrate this, for this particular example, I want the whole memory, all the data that I want to be saved, and I'm not allowed to touch it. So I'm not going to start popping stuff off until I've finished putting as much as I can fit in. So I'm doing a, a SHA-256 um, hash on what I put in and making sure that's the same as what I get out in the other process. Um, and uh, that is, I don't need to rerun it, it's going to have a different hash but do the same thing. Um, just kind of a test with those three threads just to make sure that that would work. And so I'll sleep for quite a few um, seconds in between after I've finished sending everything. Just make sure it's like, yep, okay, my memory's gone down. And then, huh, cool, I can get it back. That's quite nice. Not, really, not very useful, but I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so next toy, um, we've already seen one of these come out, um, Raspberry Pi. These things have on them so many connections already. Um, from your uh, breakout um, pins for GPIO, so if you want to connect this up to um, be doing some GPIO stuff, inputs and outputs, that would be excellent. But it's also got LAN, USB, um, and from there, you've, you've got, wait, hang on, this is actually just a computer, completely. Um, I've got a USB dongle on here, and I thought this would be a perfect thing to demo um, some Bluetooth sockets and everything, but it's really not much different from doing it on my computer. This is just a computer. It's a very cool toy, very cheap, awesome to give to kids to get into programming, everything like that. It's a bit boring right now, so I'll put, I'll put that away, but we can have a play with that. Instead, I found something else. This was the same price, like $40 odd dollars, and it has less processing power. It's nowhere near as um, capable as the Raspberry Pi, but it's got motors, and it's kind of like a car. If I, I turn that on there, and find myself a terminal, ideally one on the screen, that thing. That's very hard if I can't see it. And go from Bluetooth. Uh, of course I left myself typing to do in front of everybody, which is hard. And this is all of like 10 lines of code. Should we try it? Yay. So that's kind of cool. Um, and this is doing just, this, this has to be Python 3 because um, in this case I'm not using Bluezy or anything like this. 
um, I've gone to the lowest level that I could find, which is um, Bluetooth uh, sockets. Um, when I had a wee look through, okay, iRacer, yes, had a Bluetooth. Um, the protocol for talking this was really, really easy. You send a single byte of data, um, X being the direction and Y being the speed. Um, so a nibble each, and meaning there's not really a whole lot of control you can do, but that's enough to drive around quite happily. Um, have a look on SparkFun for the iRacer if you're interested. So if you search, if you go to Python 3.3 docs, or docs.python dev, um, and you search, on the entire page, there is one mention. You search for Bluetooth, there's one mention. It comes up once, once, that certain other address families might be supported. Um, and so documentation might be a bit sparse, but there's full support for doing Bluetooth using sockets natively in Python 3. It's no Bluez, no import Bluetooth, nothing like that. Just import socket and create a Bluetooth socket. To be fair, I had to go quite into the source code to work out what they're talking about. Um, but it ended up being that. Like that Bluetooth car, I wasn't lying. It's about 10 lines of actual socket code um, to do everything. Give that to your kid. Go, hey, you can control this with your keyboard. Put a while true loop around um, bringing in some new source. Use something like that. It'd be awesome. So what, what I do is work on wheelchairs. I do protocol design and um, the control algorithms for electric wheelchairs up in Christchurch for dynamic controls. We use CAN, controller area networks. We have a few um, development kits and things like that lying around and we, we obviously monitor um, what we put on our bus. We do a lot of introspection and we, uh, we really care that um, our protocols are doing as we say and so we have to um, experiment. As part of my job I get to do a lot of prototyping of drive algorithms, which might mean I want something on the bus which is live processing, so doing real-time work, um, maybe changing a signal as it's coming in, modifying it, maybe, maybe that acceleration that grandma asked for is just not enough, so we'll double it to see what happens. Um, it's quite fun doing test driving wheelchairs. Um, I've got an example here because from, I think, Python 3.3, they added support for CAN to um, sockets. There's a... Um, a library that's been contributed to the Linux kernel by Volkswagen Research called SocketCan, and my Ubuntu had it. I didn't need to update. It wasn't like in the last few weeks or months or even years. It's since 2.5, 2.6 um, kernel. So you can make yourself a virtual CAN network, probably for half the laptops in this room, you can just do a pseudo mod probe um, vCAN, and you can start experimenting with this stuff. Or if you have some sort of USB to CAN, device, you can make your own network, start to play with other embedded devices, um, which we'll get to in a second. So CAN itself is um, it's chosen for vehicle um, bus networks, probably any, any um, late model cars since mid-2000s will definitely have CAN networks, multiple CAN networks. They'll be talking from all the microprocessors, all the sensors and things, everything um, on your car will be communicating over a bus kind of like this. Um, because you've got quite reliable um, deterministic um, communication and it's priority based so the thing that says my engine's on fire, that message goes out first. Um, yeah. So virtual can, we can add it um, from, the, from the Linux command line, we do something like that to make a, um, a vCAN. So then when you go IF config, you just have one extra thing, it's not F0, it's not w, um, WAN, WLAN. But um, it's vcan0 or can0 in the later case here, if you have the right module. I'm going to make one of these um, now with a Caveza. So Caveza is a can to USB product, um, which I'm not trying to condone or anything like that. But it does happen to have a socket can driver, somewhat readily available. If I copy that across, run that. Bring up a terminal window in front. No, I won't do that in front of everybody. Talk amongst yourselves. No. So now when I run ifconfig, up the top there I have a CAN0 network as well as the 
Ethernet and everything else. So it's just another, another networking interface. Um, what we can do if we're using sockets is get the kernel to do as much work as possible, as much of the work as possible. Next, I'm going to have something on the other end of it, because it's kind of boring talking completely to yourself. It's somewhat like a presentation. Plug in on the other side of my laptop a, another embedded device. This one is a Luminary development kit, um, also very cheaply available. Um, this happens to have CAN on it. That's kind of why I chose this particular one. Um, I'm hoping very much that I can just connect to it and this one would work. That would be lovely. Um, and it happens to also run something called eLua, which is an embedded version of Lua, full implementation of the Lua language, but um, actually interpreted um, on the machine there. So just connected to that. Right, I didn't do that in front of everybody. Um, Miniterm.py is just a, um, a serial communications um, protocol, and I've connected to TTY USB 0 when I plugged it in, and now from here I have various files and I can run Lua, and if I remember how to do Lua I could do stuff very similar to Python, but somewhat faster and smaller, um, kind of. <laughs> I don't say it's better, I like Python. Um, what I've got here is a little wee Lua script which will spit out messages. So if I go bcan.lua, um, it's going to send out a heartbeat every 100 milliseconds or something. Um, if I fire up Wireshark, which is connected to CAN0, which of course comes up on my other screen, starts spitting out messages. So we can see there's data coming in. So this is monitoring the CAN network. And the data's very boring, um, 3034 bytes um, containing hex 303030. Rather boring. Um, might change a little bit, I think. Yeah, if I start to press buttons on it, it's doing something different. That's kind of cool. I've obviously got a program in Lua on here, which when the buttons are pressed, it changes the data coming out. What we could do with that is from Python, open a socket using socket can and get the kernel to do some filtering for us. So um, if I'm not really interested in these heartbeat ones, like the kind of flooding Wireshark there, it's a bit boring. Um, I can create a raw socket, same as we did with a socket to Google. But this time I'm saying, use this USB device thing, which has a socket can, use that networking interface, filter um, can messages which have the can ID 00FF, and mask that ID. I actually only care that it has 00 if that particular, those four bytes of it matter. Forget the rest, they can match anything. So I've done kind of like a wildcard identifier on can messages coming in. What you could do in Python if you have um, a, you know, incoming queue of every message, but when you're running on an embedded device, you've probably got traffic coming in very, very fast. Um, might be two milliseconds for some particular uh, messages. That might be the um, update rate. And if you're trying to filter, did I get something like that? Um, maybe you've got something that's coming in every 10 milliseconds with a jitter of one millisecond. Um, and if it's more than three milliseconds late, something's wrong, you want to raise an error, the test failed, something like that. So you need very accurate timing when you're doing this kind of thing. Doing that in Python is not that practical. Python struggles, even on my super desktop computer here with an i7, it struggles to keep up with that. When we're um, doing wheelchair medical stuff, medical regulations, they, they kind of want a bit more than yeah, most of the time it works. Sporadic fails aren't that accepted. So if we can pass off as much work as possible to the kernel, that's good. The kernel's fast. The kernel can do this really well. So we pass, we tell the kernel, we ask the kernel, do this filtering for us, please, with set sock opt. So this is just a um, Python method that sockets have. And it was the same kind of hackery before when I was asking the kernel if it would mind giving me, please, a little more memory in my buffer to make that kernel manage memory. It's just how you ask the kernel for something to do with the socket. eLua, I probably said I was going to talk about that board. Full implementation of Lua on it. Um, it runs on the bare metal, so it's not... Um, you saw I actually had a Lua interpreter there. don't even think I got print hello world down, but um, it's running the embedded code on there. So unlike PyMite or something where it might be... Um, 
somewhat compiling your Python code into bytecode then sending it down, I'm running Lua on here. It's interpreting in the loop on the bare metal, which means for prototyping, awesome. Um, I'm in the loop. I'm, I'm inside um, doing, you know, I've got actions um, to the pins. I can um, directly influence LEDs and read the incoming signals and things. So, yeah, for rapid application development, I really quite like these kind of devices where you're, you're down, down with it. Um, don't really need to tell you what I did. This really isn't an order, is it? Has can and simple serial interface over the USB, which is how I was talking to it by the USB there. And it has a um, SD card and everything so we can store or LAN. Before I go to that, if, if we find a terminal, that'll do. That um, car that we had here. Go away, iPython. Can. Who can see something that sounds like car? Car, car, maybe? <laughs> no, that needs BCM, um, which is the next part. <laughs> Bluetooth car. Sorry about this. Can and car don't appear in that list, do they? I'll do this one. Maybe I made a note for myself. Okay, I'll carry on because I can't find my demo. <coughs> Massive list. So there's one more um, trick up Python sleeve, um, or up socket sleeve, which is the broadcast manager, BCM. So it's not really, okay, it's not supported by Python yet. Um, Python 3.3 introduced a lot of support for CAN, but not this particular part of it, broadcast manager. But it was a pretty quick hack. I made a patch that would do it um, so that I could send the right messages and the, the right um, things down to the kernel, because if you can get this going, you get to ask the kernel for filtering and, um, well, I'll go straight to the, the one documented, the one piece on the web that talks about what it does. It seems everything with sockets and with kernel um, just doesn't have documentation. But someone wrote one post back in 2006 saying what they wanted a broadcast manager to do. And then somehow a patch went through the cycles of um, review and made it into the kernel. So it's there and it works. Um, and you can quite easily write things that, um, I mean, you can, you can ask the kernel, I want to see this message every 10 milliseconds, and if you don't see it for more than 5 milliseconds outside of that, tell me, otherwise I don't care. Just run. You don't, you don't have to have anything. You've got a blocking um, socket open on it, so you're just, you're just no processing it from, from your perspective, from your process whatsoever. Um, and the same for sending. So I can set up a message and say, send at this rate, once every millisecond for 100 sends, then trans, uh, change your update rate to say once every 20 milliseconds and keep sending out. And it will just go away and do that. You just told it to go. It's kind of like spinning up a thread, but for a particular um, purpose of CAN traffic in the kernel, um, which is very, very quick and very accurate. And the timing is much, much better than you can achieve with Python otherwise. Um, yeah, so. I've got a few of these examples, including the one that I really wanted to get to, which was driving the car with this via CAN to Bluetooth to the car, but I couldn't find it in my list. Um, on um, Bitbucket, under my username, Hardbyte Python Socket Examples, which I might tweet straight after this talk if anyone's interested. And so, Yes, if you wanted a very, very stupid example of how to do um, HTTP um, sockets, uh, don't look at mine, but maybe the coolest stuff would be looking at the CAN um, and the Bluetooth, which I couldn't find any um, examples of that you could do that from native Python. Um, yeah, so any questions? And thank you. Sweet.